David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him, and he became their commander. About four hundred men were with him. From there David went to Mizpah in Moab and said to the king of Moab, Would you let my father and mother come and stay with you until I learn what God will do for me? So he left them with the king of Moab, and they stayed with him as long as David was in the stronghold. But the prophet Gad said to David, Do not stay in the stronghold. Go into the land of Judah. So David left and went to the forest of Harith. Now Saul heard that David and his men had been discovered. And Saul was seated, spear in hand, under the tamarisk tree on the hill at Jibia, with all his officials standing at his side. He said to them, Listen, men of Benjamin. Will the son of Jesse give all of you fields and vineyards? Will he make all of you commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds? Is that why you have all conspired against me? No one tells me when my son makes a covenant with the son of Jesse. None of you is concerned about me or tells me that my son has incited my servant to lie in wait for me, as he does today. But Dog the Edomite, who was standing with Saul's officials, said, I saw the son of Jesse come to Ahimelech son of Ahedab at Nob. Ahimelech inquired of the Lord for him, he also gave him provisions and the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Then the king sent for the priest Ahimelech son of Ahedab and all the men of his family, who were the priests at Nob, and they all came to the king. Saul said, Listen now, son of Ahedab. Yes, my lord, he answered. Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, giving him bread and a sword and inquiring of God for him, so that he has rebelled against me and lies in wait for me, as he does today? Ahimelech answered the king, Who of all your servants is as loyal as David, the king's son-in-law, captain of your bodyguard and highly respected in your household? Was that day the first time I inquired of God for him? Of course not. Let not the king accuse your servant or any of his father's family, for your servant knows nothing at all about this whole affair. But the king said, You will surely die, Ahimelech, you and your whole family. Then the king ordered the guards at his side, Turn and kill the priests of the Lord. Because they too have sided with David. They knew he was fleeing, yet they did not tell me. But the king's officials were unwilling to raise a hand to strike the priests of the Lord. The king then ordered Dog, you turn and strike down the priests. So Dog the Edomite turned and struck them down. That day he killed eighty-five men who wore the linen ephod. He also put to the sword Nob, the town of the priests, with its men and women, its children and infants, and its cattle, donkeys and sheep. But one son of Ahimelech son of Ahedab, named Abiathar, escaped and fled to join David. He told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord. Then David said to Abiathar, That day, when Dog the Edomite was there, I knew he would be sure to tell Saul. I am responsible for the death of your whole family. Stay with me, don't be afraid. The man who wants to kill you is trying to kill me too. You will be safe with me. When David was told, Look, the Philistines are fighting against Gila and are looting the threshing floors, he inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack these Philistines? The Lord answered him, Go, attack the Philistines and save Gila. But David's men said to him, Here in Judah we are afraid. How much more, then, if we go to Gila against the Philistine forces? Once again David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him, Go down to Gila, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. So David and his men went to Gila, fought the Philistines and carried off their livestock. He inflicted heavy losses on the Philistines and saved the people of Gila. Now Abiathar son of Ahimelech had brought the ephod down with him when he fled to David at Gila. Saul was told that David had gone to Gila, and he said, God has delivered him into my hands, for David has imprisoned himself by entering a town with gates and bars. And Saul called up all his forces for battle, to go down to Gila to besiege David and his men. When David learned that Saul was plotting against him, he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the ephod. David said, Lord, God of Israel, your servant has heard definitely that Saul plans to come to Keilah and destroy the town on account of me. Will the citizens of Keilah surrender me to him? Will Saul come down, as your servant has heard? Lord, God of Israel, tell your servant. And the Lord said, He will. Again David asked, Will the citizens of Keilah surrender me and my men to Saul? And the Lord said, They will. So David and his men, 
about 600 in number, left Gila and kept moving from place to place. When Saul was told that David had escaped from Gila, he did not go there. David stayed in the wilderness strongholds and in the hills of the desert of Ziph. Day after day Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hands. While David was at Horish in the desert of Ziph, he learned that Saul had come out to take his life. And Saul's son Jonathan went to David at Horish and helped him find strength in God. Don't be afraid, he said. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. The two of them made a covenant before the Lord. Then Jonathan went home, but David remained at Horish. The Ziphites went up to Saul at Jibia and said, Is not David hiding among us in the strongholds at Horish, on the hill of Hakila, south of Shimon? Now, your majesty, come down whenever it pleases you to do so, and we will be responsible for giving him into your hands. Saul replied, The Lord bless you for your concern for me. Go and get more information. Find out where David usually goes and who has seen him there. They tell me he is very crafty. Find out about all the hiding places he uses and come back to me with definite information. Then I will go with you, if he is in the area, I will track him down among all the clans of Judah. So they set out and went to Ziph ahead of Saul. Now David and his men were in the desert of Mon, in the Arabah south of Shimon. Saul and his men began the search, and when David was told about it, he went down to the rock and stayed in the desert of Mon. When Saul heard this, he went into the desert of Mon in pursuit of David. Saul was going along one side of the mountain, and David and his men were on the other side, hurrying to get away from Saul. As Saul and his forces were closing in on David and his men to capture them, a messenger came to Saul, saying, Come quickly. The Philistines are raiding the land. Then Saul broke off his pursuit of David and went to meet the Philistines. That is why they call this place Selahamalekot. And David went up from there and lived in the strongholds of Engadai. After Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told, David is in the desert of Engadai. So Saul took three thousand able young men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way, a cave was there, and Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said, This is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Afterward, David was conscience-stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay my hand on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. With these words David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My lord the king. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say, David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you, I said, I will not lay my hand on my Lord, because he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe but did not kill you. See that there is nothing in my hand to indicate that I am guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. I have not wronged you, but you are hunting me down to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me. And may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me, but my hand will not touch you. As the old saying goes, from evildoers come evil deeds, so my hand will not touch you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Who are you pursuing? A dead dog? A flea? May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May he consider my cause and uphold it, may he vindicate me by delivering me from your hand. When David finished saying this, Saul asked, Is that your voice, David my son? And he wept aloud. You are more righteous than I, he said. You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. You have just now told me about the good you did to me, the Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. When a man finds his enemy, does he let him get away unharmed? May the Lord reward you well for the way you treated me today. I know that you will surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will not kill off my descendants or wipe out my name from my father's family. So David gave his oath to Saul. 
Then Saul returned home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. 